All right, all right. I'm back live here in uh, Montego Bay. Uh, hopefully you all can hear me great. There's some music in the background. Start a little later than I did uh, yesterday, but you know, bottom line, I'm really excited about being here. So this is uh, day two of Wealth Principles. Uh, the acronym I give for these Wealth Principles that most of what you're hearing on the internet and you're reading in the newspapers and reading online where people are so interested in investing, building businesses, Toro, cryptocurrency, all these fall under the umbrella of, of building wealth and of those principles. So yesterday I gave you a brief overview of what the acronym BART is about. And there's four parts of these principles, the four principles of BART, business ownership, asset leveraging, recurring or residual income, and then trend, following red hot trends. So today's um, brief video is gonna be about the B, the business ownership aspect of these trends. And I, I took down a couple notes just so, uh, you know, I wouldn't forget anything and I'd be very thorough, but it, it's super simple. So the business ownership aspect of it, there's four fundamental principles within that that are, that are essential and that I would say would give you clues of why it's necessary to be a business owner. And not even from a wealth aspect from it, but just from uh, being astute and being financially savvy and being able to play big in a capitalistic society like America. So let's get right into it. The first uh, component of business ownership or why you need to have a business deals with cash flow. You know, right now, it, you have inflation is very high, gas prices are going up, but do you know who's worrying about it the most? Those folks that don't have businesses. Why? Because you have no control over your income. Gas prices go up, you can't say, I'm just gonna pay myself more money. No, and your employer is not just gonna give you more money. So one of the important reasons about having a business is because you control your cash flow. If inflation goes up, if gas prices go up, one, you can raise your prices in your business, which gives you more revenue. Two, you can drive your business so you get more customers, which raises your revenue and your cash flow, which helps you adapt for inflation. So the first important reason why you need to have a business because it gives you the ability to control your income. You need more money, you do more in your business, you get more customers, you sell more products, you sell more services, you serve more people, then you're able to increase your cash flow. So control over your cash flow is the first reason why you need a business. The second reason is taxes. And taxes have an impact on your cash flow. You know, many people say, wow, taxes are just too high. Well, taxes are high if you don't put yourself in a position where you have the ability to use the laws that allow you to lower your taxes, to keep more of your dollars. Business owners have access to hundreds of more deductions than non-business owners. So you can be an employee and be a business owner part-time and have the same tax advantages. See, what the government says is this. If you're a business owner and you have a vehicle, you can make a part of the expenses you incur by using your vehicle tax deductible. If you travel, you can make a part of your travel tax deductible. It says, if you have children, raising your children can be expenses. You can make some of those expenses with respect to raising your children tax deductible because you're a business owner and you can hire them in your business. So if you're complaining about taxes being too high, stop complaining and start a business and learn how you can make a part of your lifestyle morally, ethically, and legally tax deductible. So taxes, lowering your taxes, minimizing your taxes allows you to keep more of your cash flow. So cash flow management, taxes, and being able to le leverage the tax laws allow you to keep more of your cash flow. So feel like tax is too high, start a business, and this gives you the ability to lower your taxes, which means you keep more of your cash flow. The third reason why you need to have a business is a very, very important one. You hear people say uh, a man should leave his children's children an in inheritance. So you can't leave something that you don't own. The third reason is equity, equity your time, your labor, your expertise, your experience, your money creates equity. 
Is it creating equity for you? See, if you have a job and you go to work, they pay you because you're going to be productive. And typically that productivity gives them, uh, they gain in the marketplace, they gain in repetition, in uh, reputation, excuse me, which is equity, which brings their value up, but you own none of it. See, if you own none of it, then you can't pass it on. If you don't own none of it, it can't take care of you down the road. Equity is important. Most people don't understand equity for whatever reason when it comes to them laboring on a job, um, exchanging their time for dollars. It doesn't quite equate to them. But think about it like this. Renting is renting. If you rent a house and you rent that house for 30 years, you build equity and you paid off a mortgage. Problem was because you're a renter, you didn't own any of the equity that you built, nor did you own the house that you just paid off? So most people would choose, I'm going to rent for 30 years, or if I'm going to pay this money for 30 years anyway, why don't I put myself in an ownership position, and the next 30 years, this $1,500 I'm paying goes to pay down and pay off the mortgage and grow equity at the same time, and I own it. Equity. So here's another very important aspect of equity, not just from your stake, sake, but for your children and your grandchildren. See, I want you to think of wealth as a relay race. And it's very much like a relay race. So think of it like a, the four by 400 relay. Each member of this four, these four band team, four women team, run a quarter of a mile. The end result is one mile was run. So what happens is the first leg gets the running. They run their leg, they finish the quarter mile. They didn't have to run the whole mile themselves. They finished the quarter mile. Then they passed the baton. Now, that team owns that baton, so they can pass it on. Now, let's relate first. Let's stop and relate this first quarter mile to, say, our great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents, right? Our great-great-grandparents, they ran a quarter mile, let's say, 40 years career, right? If they earn a job, they can't pass that 40 years on to our grandparents. But if they owned a business, a farm, any type of business, that 40 years can then be passed on to our grandparents. So now the second leg gets to running. They run a quarter mile. That second leg ended up at the half mile mark, but didn't have to run the whole half mile. No, they gained benefit off that first quarter mile. So now a half mile would run two players. They then pass baton on to the next teammate. Well. Our great-grandparents worked 40 years or worked the business for 40 years. If they worked the business for 40 years, they can pass the baton on to our grandparents, right? Otherwise, they can't pass the baton. Our grandparents had to work 40 years themselves, gain no benefit of the previous years. Now, our grandparents ran their leg, right? They're 40 miles, they're, they're 40 years. The second leg ran their quarter mile. Now they pass the baton on to the third leg. In the family instance, that would be our parents. Our parents either received the baton that had 80 years of business before them or 80 years of labor. If it was 80 years of labor, they started all over from zero. They had to run the 40 year race from scratch, from ground zero, right? So now our parents, that third leg, run their quarter mile, work their 40 years, now, if our parents worked 40 years on the job, guess what? When they passed the baton on to us, we started at year zero. We didn't benefit off the 120 years of labor that went before it. But if our parents was passed their business down from the great-grandparents to the grandparents to them, they then passed on a business to us with 120 years of equity already built. We started at year 121, not at year zero. So... Equity is very, very important. So you can have a brilliant career, all that you want to be proud of. But understand that corner office, it's not yours. You can't pass it on. That spot, parking spot with your name on it, be proud of it. It's not yours. You can't pass it on. The wall that has your picture on it, employee of the month, the year, the quarter, the decade, it ain't your wall. You can't put your kid's picture up. So be proud of all those accomplishments, but understand you're limited 
when it comes to building wealth and you're limited when it comes to passing something on to your children and you leaving them something. Now, this is a bonus. This isn't even a, a part of the equity piece. In fact, I'm gonna save the bonus for last. Let's get to the fourth part. The fourth part of why you need the business is credit. There's personal credit and there's business credit. The difference, one of the differences is one, on business credit, you get much higher limits and credit is meant to be leveraged. And I'm gonna talk about that on the next, I'm not gonna go in detail. So the next principle is asset leveraging. I'll talk about leverage uh, on the next one in detail, but it's meant to be leveraged. So why you need to have a business and, ask, and use business credit more than personal credit is very simple. Is let's say you have a personal credit card with a $20,000 limit, right? And you need to use 15,000 of it for whatever reason you need to use 15,000 of it. Well, guess what? Your credit score is gonna take a major hit because now you're at 75% utilization. 75% utilization. And that's a death sentence for your credit. Now, if you had a business card with $20,000 limit and use all $20,000 of it, your personal credit score doesn't take a hit because what you use in these business cards doesn't impact your personal credit score and it doesn't impact your, your um, personal utilization. So one, you get much higher limits when it comes to credit. Plus, business allows you to leverage at a greater scale other people's money to build your business, to hire employees, to do marketing. So recap briefly, the four aspects which makes it essential and necessary when it comes to building wealth, to owning a business is one, cash flow. You get to control your cash flow. Two, taxes. You get to leverage tax laws to minimize your tax liability and keep more dollars. Three, equity. If you don't own it, you can't pass it on. And your time, your expertise, your leadership, your education, they're all being used to build equity. Unless you have a business, it does those things don't build you any equity. And last is credit. Business credit allows you to get higher limits. And as you're leveraging that credit, it doesn't impact your credit score. So this went a little longer, but that's all I have here live now from Atigo Bank. So tomorrow, a part of the series will go on number two or the second uh, principle, which is asset leveraging. So, so long from now here in Montego Bay. You guys have a fantabulous weekend. Irie.